whether you're new to bluegill fishing or if you're just wanting to pick up a few tips and tricks, this video is gonna be for you. We're gonna focus only on catching bluegill with crickets today. Now, compared to other baits like worms or bee moth or lures, crickets will absolutely, hands down, give you the fastest response from the fish. Bluegill's natural diet is insects. So a cricket falling in the water is absolute heaven for a bluegill. So the shape of the body and the size of the mouth of the fish tells you tells you this. So bluegill have a tall, lean body. That's that's for lateral motion. They can they can turn right to left quick, but they're not made for outright speed like a bass. So a bass or a crappie even those are uh, those fish have big mouths and they're really sleek. So they're designed to to pursue minnows and things like that. Well, bluegill have a very small mouth, and they make quick lateral motion. That's for collecting insects from the water. One important thing with bluegill fishing is to think about efficiency. If you want to catch a lot of bluegill, you want to use one of these little long shanked hooks right here. And the reason is you'll spend a ton of time digging hooks out of their mouths if they get the hook deep. And with their tiny mouths, that can be challenging. So if you give yourself a hook with a longer shank like this, it's pretty easy to get a hold of the hook and twist it and release it out of the fish's mouth. So you can put the fish in the bucket and keep on moving split shot I just like to take a variety with me if I'm gonna be using a bobber I do like to have a little light split shot on there um, but one of the ways I like to start off fishing is with no bobber I just like to let the the cricket drop and sometimes you'll find where they're at in the water column better that way and then we can come back and put a bobber on if we're getting hung up on stuff uh, on the bottom or we're not catching the fish because we're passing through the the area where the bluegill are feeding at We can put a bobber on set the depth and then we'll toss it back out there and, and let the Let the bobber do the work. I am going to be using spring bobbers today I bounce back and forth between slip bobbers and spring bobbers But the thing I really like about spring bobbers is I can take them off the line really quick and easy and put them on quick and easy The next thing you could spend a ton of time doing when you're bluegill fishing especially from a kayak is you spend a ton of time putting the fish on a stringer or in the basket and it'll take you as long to, to, to accomplish that task as it will to catch the fish so if you shorten the period of time you spend on that task that's more time with crickets in the water so this is a little trick i learned from a buddy Derek davis who is by the way an absolute bluegill master he will sit on a bluegill nest and just hammer it all day long and hey he'll be in heaven the whole time but he came up with this trick and I'm gonna show it to you today. It, basically, we're just gonna take this bucket, we're gonna cut a hole right here in the center, and we're gonna kind of fan the hole so we can stick our hand in it, push a fish in, but the fish won't be able to jump out. So we just take our bucket, punch a hole in it, and I'm using a pair of sliding shears here. I'm just gonna cut a circle. flaps like this and this will help us stick our hand down in there and get uh, the fish in there but we'll be plenty to keep them from being able to jump them down boom done our bluegill storage device is ready well, one little trick I picked up when trout fishing is wear as much of the gear as you can so I always have a pair of clippers on me for snipping line and I got them all lanyard, so they're right here around my neck at all times. And then hemostats are the best thing for taking hooks out of fish's mouths. If you got a big pair of pliers, they'll work too, but boom, I got everything I need around my neck. I'll stick these, uh, I'll stick the bobber and the hooks in my pocket. I might just leave that here. We're ready to fish. Fish, boom, chuck it in the bucket. One of the best tackle boxes you'll find. It's just an old craftsman drill bag. Boom. So this is a strip pit. So there are what are called spill piles. And there's a spot down, uh, down on the other side of the lake where the spill piles extend under the water almost all the way across the lake. And that's where I'm gonna head to. So I'm starting off just a light little split shot. That's like a 30 second uh, 
one thirty seconds of an ounce. And I'm gonna go through the side of the thorax. Now, I change this up sometimes, but this is how I'm gonna start. water over here spawning those are I, I couldn't get a good eye on them but I think they're ready so they get real brave when they're on their nest and they don't spook off real easy so let's see if we can get a cricket over there right under that tree so I'm gonna go real shallow because they're right up on the edge minutes it felt like maybe it was two or three I don't know but sometimes bluegill they kind of get into a frenzy once they start feeding so let's see see if we have that happen here that's a pretty one going in the bucket it's been a little slow to start here <clears throat> so I try getting some underwater shots starting to pick up a little bit now so while I was shooting this video, I was a little vexed at first while I was out on the lake as to why I wasn't getting any bites. Well, pretty quickly realized the fish were all on the nest. Now in the past, bluegill have bit, bitten crickets. They eat crickets just fine while they're on the nest. But today they weren't. So I decided to put cameras down in a couple different shots and kind of check out to see what they were doing down there. So in the upcoming clip, you're going to get to see a couple cool things. One thing I did not know and I learned about uh, readier is that they'll take their gills and they'll flare them out and uh, to ward off competition. Uh, they also you get to see how they build their nests. If you've ever wondered how those those divots or craters get made, they sit vertical in the water and fan their tail, and they just push all the sediment and the debris out of the way. So you'll just see rocks and things in the bottom, and that's where they lay the eggs. You'll see a scene where they're doing that. And uh, you also see guarding, where the fish just takes and basically just runs circles around the nest. All that you get to see in the next clip. And for some reason, I put it to music. Enjoy. I've been messing around. Oh, look what we got here. Bass are hungry. 
That was who hit the water when I threw it in. Come here, fella. Calm down. Now see, they will take a cricket right down the throat. It's okay. Yeah, I'll get you clean release here. There you go, pal. Put your legs in the water while you're kayaking, you can use them like a rudder and give yourself fine-tuned little adjustments. You know, just moving the leg like this just a little bit gives you a little rotation the other, you know, one direction or the other. Look at this beast. Like this spot so much is there's a little channel that the fish pass right through going from over here to over here and I'm just dropping that cricket right in that channel and also the wind is kind of a, there's kind of a wind break there so it's not pushing the bobber out away from the, the spot it's just a real nice place to fish real nice got my oar jammed into the ground and I'm holding on to it as an anchor. Working pretty good. Could get an anchor, but whatever. So I'm just dropping it down to the bottom now and uh, kind of jigging the cricket with a split shot on there. This is a pretty deep channel over here. So again, I'm on top of a spill pile right now. So if you look back here, What happened when they mined it is they the drag line would make these piles and the piles extend underwater and so I'm following one of these valleys and the fish really love getting in these valleys down there yes he's not the biggest one down there but he is a nice one by the way, I do call them he's because the males are the ones that fan the nests. The females just lay the eggs and take off. All right. What I'm doing, every time I cast, it scares the fish and they take off. But they're coming back to defend their nest so fast. I just, I gotta get the cricket to sit in their nest. Now they're not feeding. What they're doing is they're coming back to their nest and they're seeing a cricket that's invaded their nest and they're defending their nest. So they're cleaning the cricket out. <laughs> and I'm just setting the hook when they move the cricket. <laughs>
got him. He was the one I wanted. Let's go. He's a beast. He's getting bigger now. Got it right in his lip. Just you like know he'll wanted. go. That guy. Anytime. You cut and work and play and hurt me. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today, so appreciate you watching. If you like the channel, like the video, you know what to do. Have a great day. You know that's all that we I think this guy gets the award big one for the day, so. Be a nice little fish mess for dinner. Fishing with Aaron. You know you'll be out on